the heavyweight champ of the world, of course, formerly Mike Tyson, knocking out all bums. He basically did all that and more. So he, of course, he will be in the corner of Francis Ngannou when Ngannou challenges Tyson Fury for the world heavyweight title. Of course, that's going down October the 30th, folks. Anytime the heavyweight champ of the world steps into the ring, his title is on the line. That's just the way it is. If Tyson Fury gets knocked out, I'm not trying to say that, that Ngannou is a world heavyweight champion, but we have to declare the titles vacant. Now, I know the WBC is going to be stubborn on this. All the sanctioning bodies are going to try to say, oh, oh, no. History tells us we have to strip Tyson Fury of the World Heavyweight Championship, should he be should he be not be successful October the 30th with Francis Ngannou. Of course, Ngannou, never a boxer, a uh, MMA guy, the former US, UFC heavyweight champion at one point in time. I thought he was the most feared guy in the world of mixed martial arts, but that was box uh, not that was that wasn't boxing. This is boxing. Straight up Tyson Fury, people think that he's got a style at six foot nine that he's just gonna roll all over Nganu. But Nganu punches short and he punches hard. He has a puncher's chance if anybody does. Straight up this is Ring Talk Live worldwide from the West Coast to the East Coast and bringing our of course our Sunday shot call. I'm talking about Tommy D, Thomas, Dylan Muth. How are you sir? Hey what's going on Pedro? How's everything? Okay I'm not hearing him here. Am I am you I not hear hearing nothing in my ears? <clears throat> okay, one more time. Hey, Try it one more time. How are you, my brother? Yeah, I'm good. And you? How are you doing, bro? I'm doing all right. When I didn't hear you right away, there I started freaking out there. And we, were, in fact, <laughs> the the, uh, the impeccable one in the other room. I saw him. He even got flustered, and he never gets flustered. So yeah, we're good. Ah, put it this way: we had such a disaster yesterday, and I'm willing to admit it. I'm gonna tell you like this: <laughs> yesterday's show was a disaster. Kids were involved with it. I mean, people not showing up. People giving me the wrong phone numbers, the right, the wrong Skype numbers. People waiting in England for us to call, and we're calling him on another number because he fought to give us a new number, and he's sitting there by his new numbers. So, oh, anyway, it was extremely <laughs> frustrating yesterday, without a doubt. Now let's talk about the boxing world. Of course, uh, Williams have paid in out what twenty nine and zip twenty five kills. Last night stoppage of Mister Guest. A guest who come to us via the Philippines. I mean, he's long in the tooth. He couldn't punch. Um, this was the perfect opponent. It was, yeah, very perfect opponent. Uh, opponent. This guy is like 30. He's 36 years old. You know, if we believe that's that's his real age. You know, he's been around a long time. Perfect Are you opponent. trying to say the people from the Philippines there. lie about their age? Is that what you're trying to say? Like, like the Cubans? I'll never forget. Yeah. I think Joe. <laughs> hey, I think Joe Casimiro when he won the 1992 Olympic gold medal. I thought he was like 60 years old then. I mean, I, I just so the, the Cubans, they don't have to tell the truth when they come over here. I mean, they come over on a boat. They swim across, right? <laughs> so they go, how old yeah. are you? And the guy says to me, uh, I'm 16. The guy's 23. You know, <laughs> anyway, that's, that. I mean, that, that's what I think a lot of the Cubans do. Russians, the same thing. Anyway, um, Cepeda, can you really get impressed with Cepeda, though? I mean, the record looks good, but I looked at his numbers, and he doesn't, preserve, he doesn't uh, present a threat. He looks very basic. He doesn't throw up, present a threat to Shakur Stevens or anybody I would consider elite at 135. Am I wrong? No, you're not. I think you're absolutely right. He hasn't fought somebody that can, you know, box and move around. He's, you know, he, he's, he's good when you're right there in front of him. But, you know? he, and, and I'm looking a, at him right now fighter. on WBC TV, Tommy, and, and he's hit. He's right there. There's no defense in him. It's a like guess is not throwing back. No. No, he's he's hitting he's hitting Zapeta's hands with his face and his body. Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> right? that's a good way to put it. All right, let's go back to 135 pounds now. Of course, everybody at 135 mm, has their own opinion as who's the best. I think it's probably Tank Davis. I mean, the undefeated lad was he like 30 and 0, 28 knockouts, 29 and 0, 27 knockouts, something like that. But the bottom line is, he's never been threatened. No, he hasn't been there. I mean, he's he's. There's been fights he's been in where he's you know gotten beaten up a little bit and you know um, threatened, uh, hit a lot, but you know threatened. No, he hasn't been hurt. He hasn't been you know wobbled or anything like that. You're correct. Okay, and you know the, the fight he had with Pitbull Cruz. You know, I'm of the opinion Pitbull Cruz. Everybody talks about how tenacious he is and everything like that. But Tommy D, he's a guy I think that needs to lose five pounds. I think if he came down to 130, he could really, really do something in the world of boxing. At 135, he's going to be maybe not the gate gatekeeper, but like the number nine or the ten guy forever. Yeah, I agree with you. He's not going to beat any of those guys at 135. If he dropped in weight, yeah, definitely, I could see him doing some things down there. Maybe you know, maybe he fights Navarrete, right? Like that'll be a good fight at 130. Uh, how good is Navarrete? Navarrete's real good. I think he's. He's top notch. He's real good. If he was to fight, you know, Shockey Foster now, I think I think he stops him. 
Okay, let's go back to 135 just for a second. Devin Haney's moved up to 140. He's going to fight Regis Progress uh, allegedly in November or December, or December, I believe, here in the city by the Bay, San Francisco. Um, they haven't actually put that on paper yet. I haven't seen it. Have you seen it on paper yet? Is it done? I've heard it's December 9th, I think is the date. Uh -huh. um, I know I've already seen odds for the fight, too. They actually have um, Haney as a three-to-one favorite. Whoa, you know, Socrates thought yesterday, I think Socrates, somebody told me that they thought it would, that the odds would go the other way. Yeah, no, and I was shocked to see it as well. Three to one favorite for, for Devin Haney. Is that because, uh, versus, is, that because uh, Pro, is that is that because Rage's progress looked stellar in his last performance? <laughs> I think that, that that has to play a role in it. And then I guess with Haney coming and fighting home in San Francisco, I guess that plays a part in it as well. Um, this is his home, but he's been telling everybody he's from Oakland, California. So he's Oakland. He's, he's, he was born and raised here in the city by the Bay, but when it's convenient, he lives in San, he lives in San Francisco. Okay. And he has, when it's yeah. ethnic, bro, I'm from Oakland. Yeah. It's the way he rolls. Yeah, it's agree. the way he yeah. rolls. I mean, his father. Anyway, um, I thought he was, I think he, personally, I think he was a disappointment at 135 pounds because I think all he did was make cash runs. All it was about is Devin Haney making cash runs. I mean, the thing with Cambosis, I understand he got tied into the two fights there, but when he fought, I thought he lost to Lomachenko. And I, I mean, I'm not trying to say it was a robbery of this and that, but he, I thought that Lomachenko clearly won seven of the 12 rounds. I thought it was a close fight too. You could, I, I had it, I had it 75, seven, five for Loma as well. I could, you could make an argument for a draw, but yeah, it, it, I wouldn't say robbery. It was definitely a close. No, 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 without a doubt. And now Lomachenko, they want to throw him in with somebody like Shakur Stevenson right away, and, and that's that's not going to good. That's not good. He's like <sighs> Lomachenko's old. I think he deserved the rematch, and with Haney, that's not going to happen. It looks like unless they do it at one forty, and he's probably not going to want to fight at one forty. I'm talking about Lomachenko, the former world champion at one twenty six, one thirty, and one thirty five. Um, but yeah, he's going to try to go on. I think they're going to try to set him up to fight Cambosis. I think that's an intriguing fight. And I think he'll look very good against Cambosis. I think he may even stop. Why are you mentioning this? And you got to take Cambosis and Ryan <laughs> Garcia. Let these guys, don't mention these guys again, man. You, Tommy D, you're giving these guys, you're the shot caller. You're giving these guys some play, man. These guys don't deserve any play. Ryan Garcia, he should be doing Victoria's Secrets commercials. <laughs> he's a good looking guy and he needs to no i meant ladies underwear the ring, but no no i meant oh, ladies wow. no 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 you didn't catch that i meant ladies underwear yeah. is he hanging around with oscar I no guess. he ain't hanging around with <laughs> oscar but he had that punk ass performance a couple of months ago that's enough to me listen he he he'll, he will never uh, uh be looked at in a positive light in my mind unless he was go out there and knock out the entire world and he's not going to do that he took the money and ran he's a millionaire he's set for life and he took it under false pretenses. Yeah, I, I agree. And then he got a couple of sponsors as well. He's he's made a lot of money. Because, you know, either, and, and he, either he was hurt going in or or he took a dive. Which one was it? I, I don't think he took it seriously. I don't think he trained as hard as he should have. You How know? could he not train That's for a monster like Javante Davis? Come on, man. The guy was 20, uh, 28, I, no, 26 knockout, something like that. I mean, come on. Especially after that second round. And, and you know, Ryan walked through the ring like, I've seen guys on drugs before. I didn't know what Ryan was on. I couldn't figure out what drug that was, but it sure wasn't motivation. Nah, he definitely quit in that fight. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe all the little things that they had in the contract with the catch weight oh, and, and man. the rehydration clause. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's a 140 pound fighter now. I'm shaking I mean, my head. I'm shaking my head. I'm shaking my head. No, no. Listen, the guy was fighting 135 pounds. They put a weight limit on, limit on him afterwards. With the right dietitian, he should be able to do that with ease. You know what I'm saying? If you got out of hand, if you got funky, then that's on you. Okay, but for the most yeah. part, you rehydrate, eat the food that you need, you're going to be okay. Um, I thought Ryan Garcia let that get to his head. I think it was a psychological issue as far as he was concerned, but. I just don't. I just don't think that he was ever the real. He, listen, when Joe Goosen said that training Ryan Guy and Garcia is a collaboration of Ryan Garcia, his father, and me, that sort of tells the story right there. I thought Joe yeah. Goosen was the boss. In fact, when I said that Ryan was going to win this fight, I didn't think Ryan was going to win this fight. I thought Joe Goosen was going to win this fight. Yeah, that, that's a that's a good assessment there. I, I agree with you there with with Joe. But it just, it just seems like Ryan is not taking it. You know, taking boxing serious, you know, as he should. Not after, listen, after the money he made, he was this. He said some crap like, like I remember he said, I can make more money on social media than I can on 
then they can't boxing this then was he selling nude pictures of himself back to the victoria's secret thing is that what he was doing what <laughs> who knows i don't know he got that money from what was the gatorade sponsored him as well i don't know ryan garcia was talking Listen, about fighting game yeah. in december and of course <laughs> the guys that are training him down there in dallas texas they just came off the successful fight with earl spence <laughs> it's not looking good and there's already rumors that that spence doesn't even want to be with um this train anymore. He wants Listen, to part ways. Spence, you know? did, Spence doesn't want to be with anybody right now. You know why? Because Spence is in his own world. He's nuts. If he wants to do this again, it's like it's like walking, it's like walking into a wall on purpose. Yeah. And that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. And if you think he got the spit beat out of him the first time, the second time he may get beat up during the referee's yeah. instructions. Yeah, and, and Bud is not giving him any type of uh, leeway either. He doesn't want to fight him at 154 either. He's told him. You know, maybe he'll do 148. He has to fight him again at welterweight if he wants to rematch. You know, I, I think so I think that um, I think that Bud Crawford is ex uh, exercising that option to an extent to not fight Earl Spence again. I don't think he really wants. It, to, it, I mean, it seems, he don't want to hurt. He I, doesn't want to hurt anybody. I, I agree. With you. I really feel like that. That's it. You know, because why? Why do that to yourself again? Right. Earl, you know listen, Earl, so, Earl I mean, Spence is is a fatality waiting to happen. OK, he got tossed out of that car. You saw the, the injuries from the car, the retina, the uh, cornea, the damage, the red, the bloodness, the blood in the eyes. Isn't that two or three weeks after the accident? So he definitely had a severe brain bleed. Um, he probably should mm -hmm. never box again. And here, you know, if, if he would got that type of beating in the ring, he wouldn't have never boxed again. And of course, one doctor says he's he's got uh, irreversible brain damage. This and I'm willing to go along with that because when he fought. Terrence Crawford, he looked like Muhammad Ali against Larry Holmes, like 38 years old, nothing. Yeah, he definitely looks like damaged goods. Even even when he was supposed to fight Pacquiao, the Pacquiao fight, he had to, you know, he had to pull out because of the torn retina. Yeah, uh, Earl Spence hasn't pulled out too often. He's got a whole, a whole bunch of the little legitimate kids. <laughs> Straight up, you are tuned to Ring Talk Live. <laughs> <laughs>